Welcome to your Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Winter arrives in about two weeks on the last Sunday before Christmas. So we're rapidly heading into the depths of winter. On the satellite imagery, you can see a long fetch of moisture coming out of the East Pacific and streaming across Mexico and the southern U.S. There it is on the precipitable water chart down in the south part of the map there, about 1 to 1.5 inch on average, extending from southern Baja California through the Gulf Coast area, about 1.5 inch from Brownsville to Tallahassee and over to Charleston, South Carolina, but much drier up north due to the repeated intrusions of Canadian air southward. We can also examine the precipitable water in terms of percentiles, relative to what we typically see this time of year. So we are in the 90th percentile from Mexico into the southern U.S. and a little touch of very dry air up there in Manitoba associated with the core of Arctic air. Precipitable water less than one-tenth of an inch. And here is the surface analysis for this afternoon. A couple different weather regimes. We have the tropical air there in Florida. Temperatures in the 80s and dew points in the upper 60s to near 70. We have an intermediate air mass. This is modified polar air. Temperatures in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. And then we have fresh polar air making it down through the Dakotas into Nebraska. Further out west, we have a new Pacific air mass moving in. We have to kind of pan out there to see the details. There it is, the new Pacific weather system, the storm track coming in from the west. And there is our triple point there, just west of Salem and Eugene. And as far as the upper dynamics, this is my preferred chart for this time of year. This can give me some indication of what's happening at jet stream level. This is about five kilometers above the surface, about three miles, 18,000 feet. And what we see here is the polar jet across Washington into Montana, and a very broad polar jet across much of the eastern U.S. That broad type of appearance is very common above surface ridges. A little bit of concentration of stronger flow right here where we have that surface low, and we've got troughing all through the central U.S. associated with cold advection. And a quick check what's going on there in Canada. We see ridging starting to take hold from the Beaufort Sea into Yukon, Northwest Territories, and Northern Alberta. This is part of a lobe of Canadian polar air, Arctic air. And the leading edge runs pretty much along the Continental Divide into Southern Yukon and into Southern Alaska, where we have that northerly flow and probably some gap winds taking place at this time. And here we have the plot of temperatures in Canada, the cyan colors indicating minus 10 to minus 20 Fahrenheit. The oranges get into minus 20 to minus 30. So some very cold air starting to become entrenched across Northwest Territories into the Alaskan interior. And over the next week or so, we're going to see that start to build through Yukon, Northwest Territories. The pressure is not really coming up. That's one of the key indicators. We want to see that up near 1040 and 1050 millibars, but we're very slow to get that. Looks like maybe by Friday next week, we are starting to get those 1050s. So that will be something to watch in the extended. And when we start getting those 1050s, that can push that cold air southward into the northwestern U.S. or the northern plains. So that is going to be the latest we have. Doesn't look like very much push to that at this time, but it will be up there. So if we get any anticyclogenesis, any upper ridging across western Canada, the eastern Pacific, that could bring some of that cold air southward. Not really much change over the next one to two weeks, but we will keep watching that extended period. Across the northeastern U.S., an abundance of clouds, some clearing across New England into the Allegheny region and into Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. 
And within that, you can see some snow on the ground all the way from northern Missouri into northwestern Ohio. And further south, we're picking up that stratus out there in Pennsylvania, the Ohio River Valley, and some cirrus further south and further to the north. Overnight lows for tonight, another very cold one. Single digits up there in New England, 20s and 30s further south. Then for tomorrow, a bit warmer, still in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, as is typical this time of year. The southeastern U.S. right on that dividing line between polar air up to the north where temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, and in Florida in the tropical air where we have 80s. Temperatures today were expected to be as hot as 85 at West Palm Beach and Sebring with possibly up towards 90 degrees through the Everglades. Overnight lows for tonight below freezing in Tennessee and Arkansas, 50s and 60s throughout Florida. Then for tomorrow, the cold air advancing into Tallahassee and Jacksonville, 50s throughout the Deep South, 80s once again for Central and Southern Florida. Checking out the southern plains, we saw mild 50s and 60s this afternoon, some 40s across Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Tonight, due to increasing warm advection, we have a dense fog advisory through much of central Oklahoma into the Wichita Falls and Red River region around Durant and Ada. Here's the overnight lows for tonight, quite a bit warmer there in central Texas up to the 40s further north, still hanging on to 20s in northwestern Oklahoma and the Panhandles. Then for tomorrow, a big warm-up in central Texas, 70s, all the way from Brownsville to Austin and San Angelo, 58 for DFW and 50s in Oklahoma. In the northern plains, a cold pattern continues from North Dakota into Minnesota and the Great Lakes, 20s for that region, but further south, 40s through Nebraska and into Kansas. A winter weather advisory is posted Saturday for all of the Sioux Falls, Sioux City area right in here, expecting two to five inches of snow. A winter storm watch is in effect further to the east. Des Moines, Waterloo, Mason City, four to seven inches of snow expected there. In northern Montana, from Cutbank to Glasgow, Glendive, we have a winter weather advisory this evening and Saturday morning, two to four inch snow amounts. And in Wyoming, high wind warnings for Cheyenne late tonight through Saturday afternoon, west winds up to 60 miles an hour. And in the Colorado Rockies right in here, above 9,000 feet, a winter, winter storm warning late tonight. And all of Saturday, seven to 14 inch snow amounts, winds to 55 miles an hour. Most of the towns and cities in Colorado are not going to be affected. This is mostly the ski destinations like Breckenridge and Aspen. However, Interstate 70 travel will be heavily affected. Here are the overnight lows for tonight below zero in parts of North Dakota and Minnesota, teens and 20s further south. Tomorrow, warming up near 50 degrees on the high plains of Nebraska and Kansas. But up north, that cold air is rolling in with highs below 10 degrees north of Duluth and Fargo. Across the southwestern U.S., a lot of fair skies showing up. However, in the San Joaquin Valley, that Thule fog extends from Redding down through Sacramento all the way down to Bakersfield. So that's about 300 miles of fog. It's not going to be a fun time out there on Interstate 5 or Highway 99. Temperatures today ranged from the 40s through the Rockies and Four Corners to the 70s in the deserts, about 70 degrees in the Los Angeles area. In the Utah mountains, including the Wasatch Range, we have a winter storm warning today through tonight. One to two feet of snow will fall with lesser amounts in the south. And we can watch that snow coming in. This is a six hour snow accumulation. And you can see how it's concentrated mostly in the mountains. Zero there for Salt Lake City, but out to the east, definitely some snow. 
and Colorado also getting some of that in the higher elevations, two inches from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Aspen. Gradually, things should taper off by tomorrow night and not much for Sunday or Monday. Overnight lows for tonight in the teens and Colorado 20s throughout the plateau regions and 40s in the California deserts. And high temperatures for tomorrow in the 40s on the higher terrain and near 70 degrees throughout the deserts. Rather warm today in the Pacific Northwest near 40 degrees in Montana and 50s west of the Cascades. We have numerous winter storm warnings all through the mountains, western Wyoming, eastern Idaho, and up into the Bitterroots, anywhere from 3 to 12 inch snow amounts and snow levels as low as 3,000 feet in northern Idaho. And high wind warnings and watches all through the Columbia River Basin through Kennewick, Yakima, Pendleton, and the Dalles, west winds could gust to 65 miles an hour. So here's your six-hour snowfall totals going into tonight and into tomorrow. Some heavy amounts in the higher elevations of the northern Cascades, and then things winding down for Sunday. Overnight lows for tonight, bitterly cold in northeastern Montana, 20s and 30s elsewhere, 40s through the Columbia River Basin into the I-5 corridor. Then a warm-up into the 50s in many areas, continued 30s and 40s throughout the Rockies. We head west into the Pacific, and we see cold advection all through the northern North Pacific, and we head up into Alaska. They are under cold advection, plenty of sub-zero conditions, minus 33 through the interior west of Fairbanks, minus 10 at Fairbanks itself, and 17 at Anchorage. Numerous blizzard warnings, winter storm watches, cold weather advisories, all through the interior. And of course, I don't want to go through all of these. The oranges, the blizzard warnings, all the way through Bethel, through the Denali mountain area, and all through southeastern Alaska, and then you go further north, you get into the cold weather advisories. Too many to name, but uh, Fairbanks, they're in this area right here. Cold weather advisory tonight, Saturday and early Sunday. Wind chills could be down to minus 55. In Canada, some bitter cold around Dawson, and I think that's Mayo minus 23 to minus 35, a little bit more mild as you go south. Further south along the Haines and Skagway Highway, we do have a yellow winter storm warning. In British Columbia, most of our problem areas are right in here. From Kamloops to Golden and Revelstoke, we have a yellow snowfall warning due to six to eight inch amounts anticipated. Other problem areas in Canada focus on the Great Lakes, the eastern side of Lake Superior, the eastern side of Lake Huron. So we're talking about south of Wawa, between Sudbury, North Bay, and Perry Sound, 8 to 16 inch amounts, affecting the Transcan Highway. Also numerous warnings across the northern Nova Scotia area, all of Newfoundland. They are under a yellow warning for wind. Wind could be up to 60 miles an hour inland and up to 80 miles an hour on the coast. And we get into an assortment of winter storm warnings, snowfall warnings, and so forth in southern Labrador. And rather than prattling on about what's going on around the country, we're going to start looking at the forecast. You can focus on your favorite area because there's actually a lot going on in, on this chart. To catch everything, you're probably going to have to run the program back and look at the details. But... Here's what's going on for tonight. You can see this cold out outbreak starting to organize up there in the northern plains that will start sliding south tomorrow. There it is, full cold advection underway, and the snow showers and dynamically forced snow already starting to get going around Sioux Falls and Sioux City. And that'll track eastward during the afternoon into Iowa as this little Alberta clipper works southeast. So here we go into Sunday. Cold air continues to spill south into Texas and Oklahoma. 
the 540 decameter thickness line, starting to advance into Oklahoma. That's usually a good indicator that the temperatures at the surface are close to 30 degrees. 1032 millibar high coming south, which is not terribly strong. The main system heads into the eastern U.S. for late Sunday, then kind of a quiet period for the early part of the week. Here comes another Pacific system as that storm track becomes established. We are looking at an increased zonal index. In other words, more west to east flow rather than north to south. So that will carry Pacific weather systems across the country. And even though the Arctic air is going to be building up, it's going to have trouble making it very far south over the next 7 to 10 days. So we get this succession of systems moving through the northern plains and the Great Lakes mostly, and not too much going on further south. So here we are about midweek, another powerful system through the northern plains into the Midwest for Thursday. And then the next outbreak spills southward for Thursday and Friday next week. And round three starts charging up up there in Montana and the Dakotas. This could be a little bit stronger. This is 234 hours out, so a lot of the details are uncertain, but you can see here the pressures are near 1050 millibars in Alberta. So this does have the potential to drive a lot of cold air all the way to the Gulf Coast region. And that wraps up this episode. And be sure to catch the cross-sections after the closing credits as things are kind of interesting on those charts. We've got full upper-level flow with, you know, us being in the middle of winter and very dynamic patterns going on, very sloped surfaces due to the mix of warm and cold air. So check that out. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So thank you very much for joining the program. And for those of you who are supporting the program, thank you very much for that. And we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporter show and on Tuesday for everybody else. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.